So welcome back everybody. Are you struggling with the question, when is it the best time to get fit? You know your technique's not perfect. Maybe you thought about pairing up with a swing coach in order to get rid of that ugly slice or that snap hook, but you just haven't been able to find time for it and you still find yourself going out to the golf course and still struggling to find the center of the fairway. Is there something out there that could potentially help you play better while you're working on your technique? Well, it's a very good question and we potentially have an answer for you. So if you wanna actually take your shots looking something like this, I'm talking slice city and no distance to something like this. I mean, nice little butter cut, you know, right down the center of the fairway and picking up some extra yards, then stick around because we're gonna show you exactly how we did it. So before we dive into today's topic, I first off want to welcome you to our channel. Our channel is continuing to grow and we definitely thank you for your support. And if this is your first time or you're just passing through, consider hitting that subscribe button, smash that bell, so this way each and every single week you will receive an alert when we drop our new content. So one of the best things I get to do each and every single day is I get to help our customers paint a different picture. I mean, achieve something that they never thought was possible. And when you're able to do that in just a short period of time and help a customers understand what the art of the possible is by simply swapping out the gear, making a couple minor tweaks or changes to the clubs that they already have, that in itself is a very rewarding experience. And when you see your customers smiling ear to ear, you know you've helped them achieve something that they've been struggling with for a long, long time. And in today's results, not only are you going to see how I was actually able to help a customer pick up an extra 40 yards of carry that he didn't think he had, but I was also able to help him eliminate the two-way miss and take the right side of the equation. So let's jump in and look at his baseline shots. So as you've seen, the customer's first series of shots pretty much all over the place. Sometimes left, sometimes right, definitely sometimes high, sometimes low. He had a couple decent shots in there for at least, well, for that grouping, but um, I just wanted to show you every single baseline shot that he did take. But now when we look at the data, understand I already went in and deleted out some of those stinkers. So this way, when we're comparing clubs versus clubs, that we're just looking at the best shots and that way it's a true apple to apple comparison. But I did want you to see just how inconsistent and how bad some of those baseline shots was with the current gamer. But let's talk about the current gamer, okay? Um, so customer is currently gaming this bad boy right here, the Ping G20 from several years. Yeah, it definitely wasn't a bad driver back in its heyday, but you know, at 12 degrees of loft, I'm already speculating that this thing is probably the reason why we're seeing some of the high spin numbers, right? Um, you know, sometimes customers need higher loft, but really, I look at slower swing speeds to get them in a higher loft to help them get the launch and the spin up. Faster swing speeds usually don't need a high lofted driver such as this one. Customer was also playing the stock regular flex shaft and definitely that's one of the things I was speculating along the lines of why he was sometimes missing right, sometimes missing left. So let's dive into the data, all right? So when we look at the table view, once again, these are the baseline shots captured in green here at the top. And let's take a look at the customer's net results. 137 output, 10 and a half launch, a little on the lower side. So for 12 degrees of loft, right? That's definitely a little on the low side, but take a look at his backspin. I mean, I already know right out the gate, I have to fix this. And how do we know where do we want to start? Well, guys, I mean, at the end of the day, from a club fitting perspective, peeling back the layers a little bit, okay, is you always want to start with the major outlier. I mean, the worst of all the variables that you're looking at, that's usually where you want to start first. And definitely there's no disputing, we're going to have to help the customer get this spin corrected. Um, and then we would continue to look, descent angle, not too bad. We like to keep it under 40 with the driver, so this way we get max total. Um, and then peak apex. All right, for the customer's input of 104, right? Definitely would like to maybe see if we can get this apex up a little bit more. Why? So this way we can actually help him carry the ball a little bit farther because I can already tell you at 205 carry and 222 total or 220 total, 
I mean, that's not a great result at all, especially when the customer is swinging 104 mile an hour. I mean, that is a stinker of a result. So really for me, I mean, I love these type of results because for me to make the promise that I can help you carry the ball farther than your current total, which would be an awesome result for anybody, um, you know, it's not a far stretch. Um, so definitely, I'm already thinking in the back of my mind that the customer should be averaging with his current delivery about 240, 250, but we definitely got to figure out what's going to be a good fit. So let's take a look at his delivery numbers before we go any further, okay? So we already looked at his output or his input, right? 104 versus that of 137. Poor output, definitely, you know, with the customer's tendency to be in a toe, you can see here. 26, 34, 19, definitely favoring the toe. Going with a newer head design that protects ball speed across the face will definitely be a better option. It's going to just give him a little bit more output, even if we, he never gets out of the toe, okay? Um, so let's go back to delivery numbers again. Take a look at that right there, okay? Angle of attack, that's crazy, crazy down. I mean, a lot of my customers struggle with hitting their irons that steep, but you know, I mean, for a driver, this is probably one of the number one things that impacts more customers than not is hitting down on the ball. So if you wanna hit the ball farther, definitely see how you can work on getting your AOA up. That would improve your launch and just give you a little bit more carry. Now let's take a look at the first option that we put in the customer's hands. So as you see from this series of shots, we had the customer hit the Cobra Speed Zone nine degree driver, and we actually had him hit it two different times. One with the weight forward, then one with the weight back. I always want to exhaust all the options before I move out of a head just to see what's going on, that trust but verify piece. But once again, didn't really see the exact direction or the marginal improvements that I would hope to see. And really, truth be told, we really don't know how a customer is going to respond to the first combination we pull out of the cabinet. It's really somewhat of a wild card. So let's take a look at the numbers here and really see exactly how the Cobra Speed Zone did for the customer. So the first numbers we're looking at here is weight forward, okay? And I picked this head because it does protect ball speed a little better than others across the face, and it does have a tendency to be a little hotter in the face, which I'm trying to get the output up, right? If I can get output up, I can help the customer hit a little bit farther. So we did improve output, 146, but that's the only thing we did. I mean, launch really just got sucked down. I mean, 6.7, really hateful. Backspin didn't improve at all, and look at his carry and his totals marginal but you know here's here's that piece i was referring to is apex got worse and there's we always got to be cautious and mindful of the changes we're introducing you know we want to solve problems but we never want to introduce other issues so when i see this i know i'm not going to stay in this head very long at all but i do want to move that weight back just to see if it has any influence and that's where the second shot or second set of shots came in and that's the green shots here okay Ball speed, same. Launch did improve. So this is a golden nugget for you. If you do have the ability to affect the CG by moving weight forward and back in the head, you can improve launch by moving that weight back. It's going to cause launch to go up. Um, spin did get a little better, and Apex also got a little bit better. But um, actually, I mean, his distance got a little better. So, you know, once again, you know, if you remember what I stated earlier, we always want to try to help the customer carry the ball farther than their old total. We already done that, but I'm not happy with this result. So the fitting's not over, all right? So let's take a look at the third option here. So next up is the Strixon 585. And as, as you can see from this series of shots, we started to see some marginal improvements. Definitely this was like the first glimmer of hope of what the art of the possible could potentially be. Started to get rid of that right side miss. Why? Because a Strixon 585 driver is an excellent draw bias driver. So if you are struggling with that right side miss, this is a great choice for you. We go to it all the time and it definitely protects ball speed across the face. And as we dive into these numbers and we take a look, um, it's really, you know, we started to see some great ball speed. I mean, first time in the 150s. Um, so let's really just take a look, okay? Um, yeah, so here, 150, 153, 152. These were the best shots, okay? Uh, but average in 149. That's really dang on good from where the customer was at. We're already talking 13, 14 mile an hour 
ball speed spikes. Um, let's take a look at club speed, right? Now, when I scroll down here, take a look at that, right? Why is the customer swinging the club faster, right? Well, we got him out of that regular flex shaft, put him into something a little stiffer, and this will help you pick up a little extra speed. It just, you're changing the timing in the field, and we're now seeing club head speeds, you know, 107, 108. So he's already picked up four or five mile or mile an hour of club head speed of input, which is really translating to that extra horsepower here. So to get 154, 152, once again, really happy with those results. Uh, let's take a look at backspin. Uh, backspin is not too bad, right? 3742. The worst was 4600. Still high. I want to get down under 3000, but I know that with that customer's AOA, that's going to be a tall task, but uh, I'm pretty confident we can do so. Um, and then Apex got better. Um, had a couple stinkers in there, but uh, still not where I want to be. But take a look at this, guys. 232 carry, 250. We're only three options in, and we're already starting to blow the customer's baseline away. And this is just the progression of the fit and how we will make little changes to move in the right direction. And that's why we always trust but verify. So if you ever go through a fitting, this is another little nugget for you. Don't settle for just one head and a couple different shafts. Make sure your fitter exhausts and tries a couple different heads and a couple different shafts to ensure you know you're trying all the options here. Okay, um, but that's the Strixon 585. Not sold, wasn't comfortable, so we end up moving him into the Ping 410 driver, which continues to be one of the standout drivers for 2020. It's been a great option, and let's take a look at those results. So as these shots start to unfold, you will see we're still trying to keep the ball on the left side of the target line, we want to keep the right side out of the equation, and it was definitely an eye-opener when we seen the results we did with the 585 driver. So definitely we want something with a little bit more draw bias, just not as draw bias as what we've seen in the Strixon. It was just hooking too much to the left, and it's one of the reasons why we didn't stay in the driver longer. Um, the other reason is, you know, we could potentially have found a better shaft, but it would just fix the customer swing today. But if he made any changes, it would not allow him to grow because there's no adjustability. So definitely the Ping 410 not only allows me to build for today's swing, but also allow the customer to grow in it as he works on his technique. So let's take a look at the Ping 410 results because, I mean, you've seen the shots. It was actually pretty dang on good. Um, so let's pull up the data screen again, okay? And, I mean, yeah, when you look at these things, not bad at all, okay? Wasn't as fast as ball speed as we've seen in the Strixon, but still really, really good, averaging out 144, okay? Um, backspin, really dang on good. I mean, I mean, I like the numbers that we're seeing here, all right? The highest was 4,200, really getting close to the 3,000 mark. You know, when we see this, we know we're starting to cook with a little bit of gas here. And then take a look at Apex. Okay, we've been struggling with height. Look at this. You know, I said this earlier on is the moment we start to see the variations start to diminish from line to line, we know we're getting really, really tight. Okay, so I like this. I mean, he had one shot that was just a stinker, 54. Okay, um, but look at the output here. Okay, 223 versus 242. Once again, not as good as a Strixon, but a lot tighter in the fairway. I mean, look, I mean, his furthest left was 36, furthest right was 0.7. I mean, that, that's a fairway monster, a fairway finder all day long. Really, really like it, but there's something else we got to do. There's something else we should be able to do to help the customer optimize his launch characteristics with this new fairway finder that we just found. And that is where the technique comes into the equation. So before we disclose the last set of results and walk through the data, I do wanna make a quick disclaimer. Club fitting alone only accounts for one side of the coin. The other side does come down to technique and at some point in time, you will have to address it if you want to truly optimize your launch characteristics. And that's exactly what we had to do for this customer. So the only difference between the last set of shots and this one is we planted one seed of change. We had to get the customer to get a little bit more pressure in his trail leg. He was just favoring that lead leg too much and that's why he was hitting down. So the thought we gave him was is at address, feel like you've got more pressure 
shift it into the right foot and feel like the left foot is a little lighter. And then try to keep as much pressure in the right foot through the swing so that way you can actually stay back. And he did that. And as you start to see these shots unfold, definitely you're seeing a higher trajectory less curvature as a result of that little swing change we made. Now, obviously this is something the customer still might have to continue to work on, but you know, once again, there's no disputing, this was a great ending result. So let's look at the data just to see how it finished up here, okay? So we see this screen here now, he's ending up at 142.6 ball speed. So it wasn't as fast as what we've seen in the previous grouping, but once again, I just deleted the outliers, kept the good ones in, because this is the art of the possible. You know, because we're making a technique change, this is something that's not gonna happen in four or five swings, but I definitely wanted to just show you what he was able to achieve. So we improved his launch to 14.7, we got the backspin down under 3,000 for the very first time in the whole session, okay? I mean, we're in the 2000s now, really, really good. You know, apexes, north of 90. I mean, we've been struggling to get the ball north of 75, but now we're in a better position. Lower lofted driver, stiffer flex shaft, definitely resulting in a 246 carry, 263 total. I mean, once again, you know, his best was 272. So definitely, you know, not a bad move from where he was before. So let's take a look, okay? So let's go to the compare tab and see exactly start to finish. 137 ball speed to 143. Why? Because customer's still favoring a toe. This is the technique stuff. We can't fix everything in one session. As good as we are, we're just not that great, okay? I um, mean, we, we can only do so much. So customer still favoring a toe, still needs to work with the coach to get out of that toe, help him really get from being so out to end. And really, with this driver, you know, there's no doubt that he will turn these fades into draws with a couple of swing sessions, okay? Um, let's go back to the ball data. Um, spin 4,600, 2,300. Okay, awesome. Uh, carry 205, 246, 220 total, 263. Remember, I was just trying to carry the ball further than his old total, and we beat that by 26 yards. So, guys, as you can see, the club matters, the technique matters, it just, it, it's all important. And there's no disputing that at the customer's current club head speed, that he's far from being optimized. There's only so much we can do in a fitting session, and we have to understand what the art of the possible is and what the customer needs to focus and work on in order to achieve his max potential. And if he does pair up with the right swing coach, really neutralize that swing path, continue to hit up on it a little bit better, this club will allow him to grow, and I can almost guarantee 260, 270 carries is in his future. So guys, we truly hope you found value in this information we share with you today. If you did, let us know by smashing that thumbs up and leave any questions or comments in the remarks below. So guys, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for another video.